G'day. I'm doing another random dramatic reading today. This one's from um, Human Biology by Pilbeam, uh, Harrison, Tanner, Pilbeam and Baker. It's a third edition from Oxford Science Publications, an introduction to human evolution, variation, growth and adaptability. This was a foundational, this was one of the fundamental texts in my first year at university for the subject in my human biology degree. We had a subject called Human Biology 1 and 2, even though we studied human biology in all its facets. And, I, and I'm so glad I kept this book. There's so many good stuff in it, even though it's so many years old. It's such a good read. Anyway, <coughs> random. What should we read today? Ooh, okay. I'm going to try and read a bit different. I'll see if I can do a, a rhythm today. Um, I'm a big fan of like Dr. Seuss. There's no rhyme in this, but I'll see if I can manufacture a rhythm out of it. It's all prose. Um, you can see that there. We're reading page 439. Uh, chapter 20. Human ecology and human adaptability out. <laughs> Let's see, I'll read, and we'll see how we go with this page. Uh, introduction. Over the long period of time from the first appearance of the genus Homo to the emergence of the species Sapiens, frequent adaptations must have occurred to allow survival in the changing environment during this time. It, it, I've gone into a ridiculous pattern. Well, let's just do it anyway. Hominoids also appear to have spread beyond their natural range, requiring still further adaptations. Finally, in the form of Homo sapiens, people adapt to almost the total range of terrestrial environments. Hmm. While Homo sapiens had the same fundamental problems of adjustment to the natural environment, as other species, it is clearly unusual in the way it has in the past and continues at present to spread far beyond the original habitat in which it evolved. Much of this ability to inhabit apparently hostile habitats is related to an ability to manipulate the environment into one suitable for human survival. An ability to modify the natural environment is not unique to people, as shown by such common examples as birds' nests and mammals' burrows, which modify the microenvironments they live in. I stuck that one up. What is unusual in the adaptive responses of pieces is first the vast amount of learned information which can be second, or which can be passed from generation to generation without genetic encoding, and second the constantly expanding nature of that. Base. Along with this accumulating information, we pass on a modified physical and natural environment, which in some aspects enhances the survival of the next generation. See, I'm just losing the rhythm. This process of transmission, often called a population's culture, forms the basic mechanism whereby populations have adopted to diverse environments. The basic biological flexibility, <laughs> that's a hard one. The basic biological flexibility of human populations called human adaptability also contributes to the adjustment process the term adaptability is often interpreted to encompass only those responses in the phenotype which are produced by the action of the environment upon a given gene system the generic term for this ability of a generic system to produce a variable phenotype in variable environments is genetic plasticity. At the same time, the term ad human, ad human adaptability is often applied only to those responses which improve some function of the organism or population in a specific environment. <laughs> Thus endeth the lesson on human ecology and adaptability. What a wonderful book. Bye now.